Praise the Lord. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, praise me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think Praise the word. Yes. Oh, 
the King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now His face I see. Oh, Happy faces line the hallways Those whose lives have been redeemed Those from homes He has mended Those from prisons He has freed Little children and the aged Hand in hand stand all aglow Those who were crippled broken and ruined now clad in garments white as snow oh the king is coming oh the king is coming i just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face i see oh the king is coming the I can hear the chariots rumble. I can see yeah. the marching throng and the flurry of God's splendor spells the end to sin and wrong. Regal robes yeah. are now unfolding. Heaven's grand stands all in place. Heaven's choir is now assembled. Amazing grace Oh, the King is coming Oh, the King is coming I just heard the trumpet sounding And now His face I see Oh, the King is coming Oh, the King is coming Praise God I want to talk to you about approaching the throne of God and seeing results in our prayer time. Sometimes we take it for granted that everybody in church knows how to pray and how to communicate with God. But the disciples, after walking with Jesus for some time, said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Many of us never got past, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep, and then our gimme list. Gimme, 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 right? And uh, we, we've talked about that, but Paul gives instructions, Jesus gives instructions, and, and, and the main thing about it, and you don't have to pray in King's English. I grew up that a prayer wasn't authentic when somebody led in church and it was, unless it was in King James English. Anybody know what I'm talking about? O oh, thou most holy God that sitteth between the cherubims as we humbly bow before thy omniscient throne. You know, some of the most effective prayers are just prayers like David had one I really liked in the Psalms. You, you want to hear it? You ready? Help, Lord! <laughs> That's a good prayer. And sometimes when a, call, a car pulls out in front of you, you know, or, or you're riding with your teenage son as he drives, it's a one-word prayer. It's Jesus! <laughs> and God hears that. But there are times that when we're communicating with God, and, and the Bible promises in our spirit a peace that passes all understanding. But sometimes we don't read the verse above that to find out how to move into that peace. Now, mom and dad used to call it praying through. In other words, you pray until you know you've touched the heart and the throne of God, and then there's a peace that God's going to take care of it in his time. Amen? Amen. And it's not just saying, God, I need this done and walking off. But, but he gives you a pattern in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. 
It says, be careful for nothing. Now, that's King's English, and that means don't worry, be happy. doesn't mean don't care about anything. It means don't be full of care and don't be anxious. Tell the person next to you, loosen up. Don't be so anxious. <laughs> so, you know, and, and it's so easy to say, this used to bug me. Jesus, how many know Jesus says, don't worry? Take no thought of the morrow. You've got enough. And, and I know he says that, but I don't know how to do that sometimes. Matter of fact, sometimes when everything seems to be going well, I worry that there's nothing to worry about. But you don't have to be a worry wart. And you don't have to consume your life. You know what worry is? It's faith in the devil. You ever think about that? It's believing for the worst. How many of you ever been guilty of believing for the worst? You know, oh God, I know what's going to happen. You know, if this happens and that'll happen and that'll happen, then oh God. And what you worry about is usually worse than if it actually happened. And it'll consume your life. And so Paul is approaching, uh, dealing with this here. And he said, don't be anxious about every, uh, for anything, but in everything. Everybody say everything. Amen. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Now I want you to notice these words. Prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and request. Say that with me. Prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, request. We're good at getting right into God's presence and starting with requests. And we don't understand that there is a proper process here that if you want to have peace that passes understanding. He said, now, if you do this with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and... Everybody say and, that's a conjunction. The peace of God, the shalom of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds, will guard your spirit, your emotions, and your mind. If you learn to pray like this, Paul says, it'll bring peace into your life. What a promise. And it's really so simple. And so, you know, the first word he gives you here is prayer. And in the Greek, prosuke means close intimate contact. You know, you can come into God's presence. And the first thing you have to do is, you know, Jesus said, acknowledge who he is, our father. No, you have a relationship with him. Notice that, that before Jesus, they didn't pray our father. But aren't you glad you're a child of the living God and you can approach the throne of grace, not the throne of judgment, but the throne of grace and, and say, our father, <laughs> hallelujah. I have a close, intimate relationship with him. So the word prayer here isn't just about talking, it's about being. Are you listening to me? It's knowing who you are in Him and knowing who He is and knowing He's your Abba Father and you can climb up into His lap and be in close relationship with Him. You see, we want to go right to requests. How many of you appreciate relationships with people that only talk to you when they want something? I didn't think so. And we take the word prayer to just mean, give me, give me. But prayer is enjoying His presence. Prayer is realizing that we have the awesome ability because of the finished work of the cross and because of what Jesus did, because we're covered by the blood and given the authority to use His name. Sometimes it's good when you pray not to ask for anything, just to get in His presence and say, Father, I'm so glad that I'm your child, that I can talk with you and you'll talk to me. And you see, it isn't just talking, it's also listening. That's why, you know, we, we have all these things. We have a habit in America, and it's not bad that we think we bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. And we do that to show respect and to shut out distractions. But do you know how Jesus prayed? Like this. These words spake Jesus as he lifted up his eyes toward heaven. Watch and pray. <laughs> One church in Africa, while they were praying and everybody had their heads bowed and eyes closed, somebody stole the offering. And the pastor said, from now on, we watch and pray. <laughs> My wife knows how to watch and pray when I drive. <laughs> and so open your Bible. 
and realize that part of your prayer time can be reading the word. Did you know that? Part of your prayer can be reading the Word. And so the first thing you do, the prosuke, is close, intimate relationship. I'm close enough that I whisper and He hears my voice. Not only that, He knows my thoughts. Hallelujah. And so I can bask in His presence and just be happy that I can be in His presence. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. I've experienced tragedies and circumstances And threatening things in my life. And may I tell you that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into. Hallelujah. And are safe. Anybody ever escape from the uh, pressure of the world by just getting alone with Jesus? And by the Holy Ghost communicating with the Lord. Prayer. I want you to see prayer not as a ritual Not as a pattern of words, but as a relationship with him. Amen. So he says prayer. First, he said, if you're anxious, if you're troubled about something, begin with an intimate contact and relationship with him. Hallelujah. And and, and make a trade while you're there. Isaiah said in Isaiah 61.3 that you can trade those ashes in for beauty. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? And you can, uh, the oil of joy you can receive for your mourning. How many want to make some exchanges in the presence of God? Hallelujah. And then you get excited when you realize, hey, God's brought me this far. He's going to take me on home. Then you put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It's all prayer. Trade your depression for the presence Of God and realize how much He loves you. Hallelujah. So I want you to just look at prayer as being in close intimacy with the Lord. And then you start unburdening yourself. 1 Peter 5 7 says, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. I remember one time I was very concerned about. One of my children and Brother Richard Dean walked up to me and he said, God just told me to tell you to remember that he loves your child even more than you do. And he's watching over her when you can't. And you know what? It just brought peace. Casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. Now, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. How many understand answers aren't always instant? And so we're told not to cast away our confidence, but to cast our cares upon Him. And it reminds me when I was a kid and I had some trash in my pocket and a couple of dollars. And I thought I threw away the trash. And when I got, I was going to buy a candy bar and a Coke and I got in the store and I'd thrown away a couple of dollars and kept the trash. I did. I said, Pastor, did, I really did. I was a kid. You know what we do? We cast our confidence away and hold on to our cares. When we need to cast our care on him and hold on to our confidence that he's faithful. Amen. And then the next word he gives is supplication. And the Greek word is dasis, which means to plead strongly. To cast your pride aside. Are you listening? To beg, to beseech, to earnestly appeal with intensity. Intercession. Supplication. How many, how many people try to find relief from their problems by venting? Venting can get you in trouble, especially whoever you vent at. This is your place of emotional release. Now, I want you to understand something. A lot of churches have divorced uh, their faith from feeling. We are not saved by feeling. We are saved by faith. But I want you to know your great high priest is touched by how you feel. 
And it matters how you feel to him. And it matters how he feels to us. Isn't that right? Our high priest, the Bible said, is touched by the feeling of our infirmity. And supplication means you're pouring out your complaint before the Lord. You're pouring out your trouble. You're pouring out what's been bothering you. David said in Psalm 42, I poured out my soul unto the Lord. And a lot of times we're just so taught, even in some churches that believe in faith, they say, well, just confess it and go on. Just claim your promise for God. Sometimes you need to pour out your soul. Supplication. If you're burdened about something, go ahead and pour it out. I'll tell you, I want to be honest with you. Even when I've been angry with God, I just tell him because you know why he knows it anyway. Now, don't look at me all self-righteous like you've never been angry or questioned God. Oh, don't ever question God. I have lots of questions for God. Moses had questions for God. Abraham had questions for God. Abraham said, Lord, won't the judge of all the earth do right? Abraham poured out his soul to God. Moses poured his soul out. Listen, this is the place in your prayer time when you get before God and the Holy Ghost can pray through you. Hallelujah. That's why you've been given his spirit because when you don't know how to pray like you ought to, Romans says, the Holy Spirit of God makes groanings that cannot be uttered and you pour out your soul to the Lord this is where you weep before God you groan oh pastor that's just not I don't care how dignified or undignified it is it doesn't really matter there are times when I'm hurting and when you're hurting it's okay to pour it out pour it out it is a it's a much better I'm gonna tell you something if you don't learn supplication you pour it out on the wrong person. Amen. How many of you have ever been under pressure and exploded on a loved one? And afterwards, oh God, I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't done that. Do you know where the release should be? Supplication. Pouring it out before the Lord. Lord, I'm vexed with this situation in this relationship. Lord, I'm vexed with this financial uh, situation. God, I, I'm bothered by this. I'm concerned about my daughter. I'm concerned about my son. I'm concerned about my loved one. Oh, God, I pour it out to you. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The old gospel song says, you feel a little prayer wheel turning, and you know a little fire is burning. You pray until the Holy Ghost prays through you because you don't know how to pray as you ought. And the Holy Spirit comes along as that paraclete, comes alongside to help and, and to lift the burden with you. And you begin to pray in the Spirit and God hears that prayer and you pour it out to Him. David said, I poured out my complaint before the Lord. I poured out my grief before the Lord. When your heart broken, let me tell you something. If he told us to weep with those that weep, and he told us to rejoice with those that rejoice, how many know that he does the same? What a friend we have in Jesus. Supplication, pouring out your soul. Hallelujah. First prayer, then supplication. Hallelujah. Pouring it out before the Lord. Amen. You know, James said it this way. It's intense. How many know it's okay to get intense with God? Did James say the half-hearted, lukewarm prayer of a righteous man avails much? Huh? What did he say? Effectual what? Fervent. Fervent. That means red hot, intense, emotional Pouring out of your spirit before God. It's okay. So you begin with prayer. And then you move into supplication. And you thank God that the Holy Spirit prays God. You know, it's, it's, you pour your emotions out to him. It's Hebrews 4.15. I've already quoted. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points. Yet without sin. And then he tells us that we can come boldly. Before the throne of grace. And, and, and I know I've said this a lot in the last few weeks, but I just got a hold of this and it blesses me. Come to him now. It's a throne of grace. Don't wait till it's a judgment throne. Aren't you glad you don't have to approach the throne of judgment? But you approach the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Pour it out. 
pour it out before the Lord. Be bold and specific in your request. Romans 8, 26, the Spirit helps our infirmities. We know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, something happens when you get into supplication and you pray and you just pour your soul out before the Lord. Suddenly, he begins to remind you of all the things he's done for you in the past. And then you begin to thank him. Oh, my gosh. I can't explain to you what happens when you reach that point in your prayer time that you begin to praise him for the answer even though you don't see it Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Lord, I'm so appreciative. Listen, I, I, nothing bothers me more than for one of my children to not appreciate what I do. I'd do about anything for my kids. I'd give my life for my kids. And when they appreciate it, I'm willing to do more. But when they're unthankful and spoiled and rotten, you don't feel like doing anything, do you? How many believe it's time for us to, after we pour out our soul, begin to thank him? That he listens, that he hears, and then he'll answer. So prayer, realize you have an intimate relationship with him. Supplication, go ahead and pour it out before the Lord. I mean, you know, now he's talking about if you want peace, it passes all understanding. Now, if you don't have a situation that's troubling you, maybe you don't have to get into supplication. I don't know about you. I need to pour out my soul from time to time. Pour it out before the Lord. And then he says, with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and the Bible says, now, now this word, Eucharistia in the Greek, is where we get the word Eucharist for communion. Communion with him and thanksgiving. How many knows that every time we break the bread and drink of the cup, we're thanking him for the sacrifice that he made on the cross? Are you thankful for what Jesus has done for you? Are you appreciative of what he's done for you? And so what happens when you pour out your soul, you realize your intimate relationship with him, you pour out your soul, and then you begin to thank him for being so good to you. Hallelujah. I promise you that he's ready then to hear your requests. Amen. Isn't that, does this bless anybody besides me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. In everything. Not for everything, but in everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. you. Say, well, I'm in a situation that's so horrible. I can't thank God for what I'm in. You can thank God you're still alive. You can thank God you're saved. You can thank God you're his child. You can find something to thank him for. Amen. And when you begin to thank, thank him, then you'll just hear the Holy Spirit say, what can I do for you? Then you make your request, your request, your attack. Aiteme, petition, a thing asked for. Here is the place where we give God our specific declaration of needs. Now, I want you to hear me. God wants you to be specific in your prayer requests. So that when he gives you a specific answer, you'll know it was God and you can give him glory. Amen. Don't just say, oh, God, whatever you want to do. Huh? I'm specific. Father, I have a financial need. Father, I have a child that needs healing. Father, I have a loved one that needs salvation. God, I'm specifically giving you this request. Jesus said to the blind man, knowing what he needed, listen, what will you that I should do for you? This is where God stops you and asks the question. You poured your soul out. You've realized you're close to him. Hallelujah. And you've been thankful for all that he's done. And now all of a sudden he says, what's your request? How I many know this is the way Queen Esther approached the throne of the king? The banquet, the worship, and then what's your request? What's your petition? This is where, and, and you, know what, you know what happens? If you do the prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, by the time you get to the request, your list changes. Are you hearing me? Because some of those things you thought was so important, you don't care now. It's like, oh, God, forget about that. I just want more of you, you know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you know, and you, you just need to understand that he cares. And, and this is just an awesome thing to me. It, it's a blessing to me. And so then he says, uh, 
His peace will flood your heart and mind. Now you get up out of your prayer time and you're like, I've given it to him. It's in his hands and there is a peace. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The situation hadn't changed yet. The bills are still coming in. Your kid's still on drugs. (laughs) Things are a mess, but there's a peace that God has in his control now and he's going to take care of it. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. You see, the word peace there, irene, means to join prosperity, peace, quietness, and rest. How about that? Oh, God don't want you to prosper. Oh, he wants you to starve. He's a good father. Prosperity, peace, quietness, and rest. Say those four things with me, would you? Prosperity, peace, quietness, and rest. It's all in that word, peace. And it fills your heart. How many understand, though, prosperity isn't just finances? Prosperity is, oh, my Lord. When your relationships are right, when your loved ones and, and, and you're in accord and your family's together and your little girl crawls, crawls up on your lap, your little boy's uh, out there throwing the football and then things are good. How many know that's prosperity? Hallelujah. And a peace will flood your heart and mind. So whatever the situation you're dealing with today, don't just squall and carry on. You see, why do you, why do you thank him? The Bible said in Revelations... Uh, Let me give you the verse here. 1910, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When you get to that place in your prayer where you've been thanking him and he says, now what's your request? Get this. This is what that verse means. What he has done for you and what he has done for others. How many has got a testimony of what Jesus has done? is prophetic of what he will do for you and what he'll do again. Amen. Isn't that awesome? And that's why all of a sudden your thanksgiving turns into, okay, God, here it is. I'm giving it to you. I release it into your care. You're going to take care of this because, you know, Lord, I remember that time before when it looked like I couldn't pay my bills and that check came in the mail. I remember that time before when I didn't think I was going to live through the month and you brought healing into my body. I remember that time before, Lord, when that situation was impossible, when it looked like that that relationship was dead and in a tomb and it stunk and it was buried, but you called life into it like you did Lazarus. God, I remember the times you met my needs and answered my prayers and heard my call. One prayer even 40 years and he answered it. Hallelujah. In his time. In his way. Because you see, you realize your intimate relationship with him. Prayer. You pour it all out to him. That's where you pour it out so you don't unload on others. Amen. Oh, I need somebody to talk to. How about Jesus? You know, he's never broke confidence on me. I've never gone to him and told him what I was struggling with, and he told 12 other people what a rotten guy I was. (laughs) But church people have. Amen. What a friend. Pour it out. Then begin to thank him for all he's done. And then realize that what he's done in the past is prophetic of what he'll do in the future. Why well, I don't know if he'll save that, that lost loved one or not. What is his will? What does the Bible say his will is? It's his will that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Is it a desire of your heart? Would the devil have put that desire on your heart? Then will he not give you the desires of your heart if you delight in his presence and in him? Hallelujah. Isn't he awesome? So, praise God. And so, then he promises us that if we will come before him with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and then our requests, we'll do that in that order, that he'll put peace in our spirits and just give you peace about the situation. Amen. Did you know where the Apostle Paul got this pattern of prayer? He got it from John chapter 11. As Jesus approaches the tomb of Lazarus, he first establishes his relationship with his father. Then he begins to groan in his spirit. Have you read it? And as he groaned in his spirit, there's supplication through the whole. It said he groaned in himself, and then he groaned in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And then after he pours that out, do you know what he does? He begins to thank him. Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me always. Am I in the word? And after he thanks him, after the supplication, you know what he does? He gives a specific request. Lazarus, come forth. And the dead gets up and comes hopping out of there. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. So I just so much appreciate the, 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 the thing that, you know, uh, thanksgiving is an act of worship. So thanksgiving is a releasing of your faith. Hallelujah. And so here he is. And you, you know what? They use this in the book of Acts. They poured their souls out before the Lord. Acts 4.24, stand with me. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord. Verse 31 said, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and made brave declarations, spoke the Word of God with confidence. When you get ready to make your request, remind God, you're actually reminding yourself, but you remind God of what He's already declared in His Word. Amen. Amen. And as you make that declaration of request... Then there's a peace that fills your spirit. And you say, you know what? I believe my father is big enough to take care of this.